tonight, a high profile prisoner exchange between the US and Iran. What does it mean for Iran's nuclear deal? And Canada postpones its trade mission to India amid strained relations between the two countries. We cover stories about world's largest petition against Quran burnings, Israeli occupied area included in UNESCO World Heritage List, and favorable remarks for the Taliban government by an English politician. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. A high profile prisoner exchange has led to the release of five American detainees and five Iranian prisoners, with most of them arriving in Doha, Qatar. The American former detainees arriving from Tehran have received a warm welcome from the U.S. officials. Two of the five Iranians imprisoned by the U.S. have also reached Qatar on their way to Iran. The remaining three have chosen not to return to Iran. Out of these three, two are staying in the U.S. and one is heading to a third country. The prisoner exchange also coincides with the unfreezing of $6 billion in Iranian assets held in South Korea. The release of assets has been a significant step in facilitating the exchange. President Biden has expressed gratitude for the release of the American citizens. He has cautioned the U.S. passport holders against traveling to Iran, emphasizing that their freedom cannot be guaranteed if detained. Politicians have criticized the prisoner exchange deal, but the Biden administration says that securing the release of U.S. citizens in prison abroad is a top priority. Analysts say the exchange may be a step up to return to the Iran nuclear deal, from which former President Trump withdrew in 2018. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the U.S. is not currently engaged on that front. Blinken says, however, they have left the door open for potential future opportunities. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has presented a comprehensive 10-point plan during her visit to the Italian island of Lampedusa, which has recently seen an influx of irregular migrants. Around 11,000 migrants have arrived from Africa in the last week alone, prompting Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney to ask the EU for help. During her visit, Leyen toured migrant reception centers on the island and spoke about the challenges of the migration wave. She has stressed that managing migration is a European task and not just Italy's burden. Prime Minister Maloney has underlined the urgency of the situation and stresses the need for a holistic solution involving all EU countries. She's advocating cooperation with North African authorities to stop illegal departures and human trafficking. Leyen's 10-point plan includes greater support for Italy from the EU's asylum agency and Frontex and relocating migrants from Lampedusa to other willing EU countries. More efforts will be made to stop human trafficking partnerships with transit countries such as Tunisia, and patrols at sea and air borders will be increased. The plan also calls for the procurement of faster boats to dismantle human trafficking networks. Canada's Defence Minister, Bill Blair, has confirmed the purchase of $33 million worth of air defence systems for Ukraine to support its ongoing war with Russia. The initiative is part of a broader UK-led coalition aimed at securing Ukraine's air defences against Russian missile and drone attacks. Blair says the contribution is part of Canada's $500 million military aid to Ukraine, announced by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in June. Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russian occupation in the south and east is slowly progressing. A former Ukrainian defense minister says although the situation is optimistic, there are still significant challenges. The announcement of Canada's aid comes as the Ukrainian prime minister is expected to make an appearance at the United Nations General Assembly to secure additional support. Bob Ray, Canada's representative to the UN, has stressed the importance of equipping Ukraine for self-defense. However, he says that the UN could not be the primary platform for such discussions. Canada is home to one of the world's largest Ukrainian diasporas and is a vocal supporter of Kyiv. 
Since Russia's war on Ukraine, Canada has provided more than $8 billion in aid to Ukraine. Out of this, about $1.8 billion has been provided in military assistance. Israel has rejected the inclusion of the ancient city of Jericho in the World Heritage List by UNESCO. In a statement, the Israeli foreign ministry has accused the Palestinians of politicizing the UN organization. Palestinian tourism minister announced Sunday that UNESCO has added the archaeological site Tel Sultan in Jericho to the World Heritage List. The site is located in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. It contains ruins dating back to the 9th millennium BCE. Jericho is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world. Israel had opposed Palestine's admission to the UNESCO as a member state in 2011. In 2019, Israel withdrew from the UN organization. A march has been held Sunday by migrants, undocumented immigrants, students, and refugees in cities across Canada to demand permanent residency status. The protests come after criticism of Canada's temporary foreign worker program by a UN official. In a report, a UN special rapporteur on contemporary forms of slavery calls Canada's temporary foreign worker program a, quote, breeding ground for modern forms of slavery. The rapporteur is calling on the federal government to provide a path to longer term or permanent residency status for all temporary foreign workers. During the protests in Toronto, migrants from Alliance Change, an advocacy group, has called on the government to create an open-ended program that would grant permanent residency status to all migrants and undocumented people. The group says undocumented people are exploited at work. It says migrant workers are also denied life-saving health care treatments and they live in the fear of deportation. There are 1.7 million people living in Canada on temporary permits. They contribute to the Canadian economy by working in farms and the food industry, caring for children and working in frontline jobs. One undocumented immigrant from Uganda who attended the demonstration says she wanted permanent residency so she could get a good job and be treated equally. For more on an Islamophobic attack on a woman in a UK bus, stay tuned. The Canadian government has postponed a five-day trade mission to India planned for October without any explanation. The trade mission, led by Mary Ng, Minister of International Trade, was being dubbed as significant in Canada's strategy to expand trade in the Indo-Pacific region. However, on the federal government trade website, a message now reads, quote, this event is postponed. Canadian officials have not disclosed the reasons. India's envoy to Canada said two weeks ago that Ottawa had postponed trade talks, although Canada's announcement did not happen until Friday. Relations between the two countries have been strained for some time. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi had been at odds at the recent G20 summit in New Delhi. Before leaving for the summit, Trudeau said he would share concerns about India interfering in Canada. India has been critical of protests by Canadian Sikhs in Canada who want to take control of the Punjab territory in India to form their own state. Modi took Trudeau aside at the summit and chided him about the Sikh separatist protests. Trudeau, on the other hand, said freedom of speech in Canada guaranteed peaceful demonstrations. While the India part of the trade mission is on hold, Canada's visit to six destinations, including Vietnam and China, is still on the agenda for October. Millions of pilgrims in Iran have signed a petition against the desecration of the Quran. The petition is the largest of its kind. It is 1,114 meters long. That is equivalent to around 13 football fields. So far, it has been signed by over 1 million people. Iranian media says 80% of the petition was recently displayed in the Iraqi city of Karbala during the Arba'in pilgrimage. 
The pilgrimage is performed by Shia Muslims to mark 40 days after the death anniversary of the grandson of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The remaining 20% is currently being displayed in two Iranian cities, Qum and Mashhad. The petition has been launched by the Arba'in Quranic camp in response to the spate of Quran burnings in Europe. The head of the camp says the petition is an international document to be sent to the United Nations to prevent the desecration of holy books. A UK mayor is facing backlash for her inaction during an incident of Islamophobia on a bus. The incident occurred in Brent, a borough in North London, during the first week of September. It involves a man verbally abusing a Muslim mother wearing hijab while other passengers, including the mayor, seemingly observed the situation. A UK-based journalist, Shamim Jodhri, who witnessed the incident, reports that the abusive man targeted the Muslim woman based on her faith in the presence of her baby. When Chaudhry offered to be a witness for the targeted woman, the aggressor warned her to be cautious. During the disturbing incident, no one on the bus came to the mother's defense. Chaudhry describes the situation as, quote, beyond depressing. She eventually informed the driver and reported the incident to the police. It later emerged that Brent's mayor was on the same bus. The incident has gained widespread attention, prompting calls for the mayor and Brent Council to respond. The mayor eventually issued a statement condemning the abuse and expressing her own sense of intimidation as a single female traveler. However, Jodhri questions the mayor's response, highlighting that the response only came after she had emailed the mayor's office. Jodhri says that the mayor might not have addressed the incident if her presence on the bus had not been revealed. Local organizations, including the Anisa Society and Brent Muslims, have expressed concerns about hate crimes and institutionalized Islamophobia in London's borough. They are calling for appropriate action and accountability. Brent Council has pledged to investigate the incident thoroughly. Conservative British MP Tobias Elwood has resigned from chairing a parliamentary committee following controversy over his remarks about the Afghan Taliban government. Elwood, head of the Defense Committee, had praised the Taliban government two months ago following his visit to Afghanistan. He praised them for, quote, completely transforming the country. He highlighted improved security, freedom of travel, and a decline in corruption, which was rampant during the tenure of former President Ashraf Ghani. He also mentioned the remarkable decline in the once thriving black market trade in opium. Elwood's remarks, which he also repeated in a video on social media platform X, have received criticisms from British politicians and media. Four members of the Defense Committee had initiated a vote of a no confidence against Elwood. A day before the vote, however, Elwood vacated his post. He said he had a strong voice and that he sees the bigger picture to offer solutions. Elwood says he still had the support of the majority of the committee. However, he says, he felt his presence would disrupt the overall efficiency and focus of the committee. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now, so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.